going to be on the right hand side just keep looking to the right hand side and then it was just the biggest picture of me and I just literally said that's me that's me like you know You know, I've always gone to the cinema, I love film, but then just to see yourself for all of a second, but it's just a feeling you can't describe really unless unless you've been in it or done it, so. You have a brother in the 2nd Battalion. Yes, sir. They're walking into a trap. Your orders are to deliver a message calling off tomorrow morning's attack. The scene I was in was filmed in Bovingdon. So the Bovingdon scene was the early trench scene, so the opening scene where uh, you've got Dean Charles Chapman, um, and George Mackay, Blake and Schofield, um, starting on their mission uh, to save 1,600 men. As the, the camera comes across, we, you know, we were joking and laughing about why I was talking about the other guy. I think it was about the football results. Um, basically, he's on like another patch of mud. I was just in the bottom of the mud, pretending to smoke. A, well, I was actually smoking a fake cigarette, um, looking up to the guy, talking about the football results, and then they rushed past me. It's bloody quiet. Was it like this before Tifa? Remember. There were times where you just were so drained physically and mentally as well. It was just, it was tough. I think the biggest thing with a lot of people was how heavy the the actual armor was. It was like the big leather jackets, and you would then wear like probably about three or four layers of clothing um, on top of that. And then you obviously had the shoes, which you know weighed a ton, and then the big leather jackets. But also you had the gun as well. There was all those attributes you had to get used to, and I think you know. Being the call time was at five in the morning, you'd go straight in to get in changed. Um, then you'd have to wait for a really long time to have makeup and your hair done if need be. Um, and then you'd go in for your breakfast. But all during this period, everyone was so shattered, was so tired. And But I think what was clever with Sam Mendes, the director, and Roger Deakins, the final shot that they'd done in the trenches was on the last day in the last hour. And that was when the weather was really grey Everyone was so tired from the week, so you got the most best picture of everyone so physically drained and tired and just looking miserable and cold and wet. I remember, I mean, the best thing I always remember was, um, do you know the scene in the early trench where the body gets put, passed through and George kind of looks back at like, wow, but... So where on that corner, I was sat for the majority of the days I was with. I was supposed to be in that corner playing um, backgammon with another guy. But Sam Mendes, I think on the last day, he walked into our bit and he just looked, which is, you know, it's quite, you know, Sam Mendes is a really good director. So I was always like, always trying to listen about what he was talking about and what he was doing. And I always remember he literally just looked around our little pod and he saw all of us there and he said, no, we need to clear that out. We need we need, we need, need more space for the dead bodies to come through. Clear everyone out. And we're like, oh, right, brilliant. And literally the assistant directors, they fly in and they're like, right, everyone out, out. Like, So at that point, you don't even know if you're going to be in the film. Like, you wouldn't believe the amount of extras that were there just for backup reasons. They, you know, people just think, you know, even if you're in a, in a one second of the film, you know, oh, they always expect more, but just to be featured in a film, that's like a lottery in a way, because with the process of being an extra, the auditions, the being picked, being dropped out, you know, it's such a cutthroat business. Um, at first, it might sound draining and boring and whatever, but honestly, the memories you get and the experience you have with people, you, you can't buy that. I, I even I actually made a mistake where the scene I walk into the other trench, um, basically Dean's run up in front of me, but George is still to come past me, so I have to get to the other trench scene. That's uh, the other trench to to before George gets to me. And on one of the scenes, my gun got caught on the wires that were hanging above me because I had to come out of the steps, and um, basically it flinged me back. I fell back, and George tripped over me. Um, so and then obviously that scene was a big cut, and I was like. Because when they say cut just for you, there's like a hundred other extras in that scene and just everyone's looking at you and you're like, 
yeah, but George found it funny, and um, you know they, they were two really good actors, uh, really nice. Spoke to everyone. It was it was yeah, it was a really good experience. Why in God's name did you have to choose me? Stay, please. No, no, no. If you don't get there in time. We will lose sixteen hundred men. So the first time I could actually see it was the uh, was that I went to the City World um, gala screening, um, and it was on the same day as the premiere, and it was right next door to the premiere in Leicester Square, London. Um, so me and my friend Theo, we uh, we bought a ticket. So this was a ticketed event, um, and it was like I think it's like eighty pounds, and it was quite expensive. But I was like. This was probably one of the biggest projects I may ever work on. Who knows what the future holds? So I was like, let's just do it. Um, and there was like a kind of a backdrop, 1917 red carpet bill. So it was kind of like the mini premiere, but we had Sam Mendes and Mark Strong talk about the film before. Um, we got we saw it for the first time, and he actually said, you guys are getting the better experience because we were in the Cineworld IMAX experience. And it's one of the biggest screens in Europe, apparently. And it was huge. <laughs> like, it was massive. But because the screen was so big, everything was enlarged and um, the film was starting. And then I started to recognise the trench scenes. I saw a few of my friends in the film and I was like, OK, we're, we're getting closer to, to where I should be now. And because it was such a massive screen, everything was so enlarged. And now I'm only in the film for what, even a second or whatever it is. But because it's in HD, you get a crisp shot of me. So I just remember, I was next to my mate Cleo and I was like, right, I'm going to be on the right hand side. Just keep looking to the right hand side. And then it was just the biggest picture of me. And I just literally, I had a champagne, I think I had a champagne in my head at the time. I probably spilled it over my beer. I said, that's me, that's me. But, you know. Like, literally, that's my dream film. I mean, there isn't, if you said to me, what kind of genre of film would you ever want to be in? Because I think with war films, they're always iconic, aren't they? Always, there's always a bit of history. You know, Saving Private Ryan or, you know, it's Dunkirk. There's always that kind of long lasting memory of it. And, you know, when you see comments of people saying this is, you know, not just the best war film they've ever seen, but the best film they've ever seen. You know, to hear that from people, you know, reactions, that's, yeah. I mean, you know, I've done small bits of work with TV series, but done nothing of this magnitude before. You know, I've even done a couple of war films after this was filmed, but still nothing will, will highlight what 1917 was. I think, some, in summary, really, the best part of it all was we always had the best of times because you're always just joking and laughing with one another. And I'll always remember that. It was the aspect of, you know, every, it was everyone was laughing all the time. And it was, honestly, I don't think I've ever laughed so much in the space of a few days because because you, you, were, you were always in pain, you were cold, you felt faint, you know, if you didn't drink enough water. So the only thing to really keep people going was the laughter and, and the camaraderie. But one thing everyone will say is that it was an unbelievable experience. You know, I think there was 500 extras of us um, you know, that's that's pretty rare in a film. I still speak to a lot of them today. We meet up for lunch when we can, have a beer when we can. Um, some live close, some live very far from me, but whenever we get the, the chance to, to meet up again, we do. Thank you very much for, for giving the opportunity to speak about the film. Um, I think obviously it's just seeing obviously the feedback from everyone involved with the film um, and obviously just you know just seeing the rewards for obviously everyone who worked hard so many people behind the scenes from the caterers um, to the, the the camera crew to the assistant directors to Roger Deakin to Sam Mendes you know winning best picture in the, the Golden Globes winning um, I think his over 10 BAFTAs um, obviously winning like the cinematography in the Oscars as well you know I think I mean the conclusion is that you know um, Teamwork really does make the dream work. And as a cliche as it is, it's true. Um, everyone played a part, big or small. And um, yeah, we reaped the rewards.